thank you for inviting me and sorry for speaking in, um, in a kind of mid-European English or East European English. Um, I was invited to talk about the Museum Squad in Vienna, which is one of the largest uh, cultural areas in the world, around 60,000 square meter. And in preparing this lecture, I remembered that I was <laughs> more or less involved from the beginning on. And so I tell, can tell you a story which is um, probably quite similar to other big cultural interventions in the world, like the Sydney Opera or the 10 years of planning and construction and, dos, uh, and discussion of the Museum Mönchengladbach. Um, it's the role of politics, mass media, and architecture and their different positions. So for me, cultural buildings are always in this triangle of architecture, politics, and public and especially in Europe, more and more from the mass media. So for every one of you, it's clear Vienna is a, well known as a city of culture. But after World War II, the city stages, the state opera, the Burgtheater, and all the other theaters were repaired, renovated, and started again with their programs. Because uh, the main culture in Vienna is still the theater, I think there is no other capital in Europe where some crazy sentences by the director of the book theater is on the front page of the newspaper. Um, fine art uh, in Austria and Vienna is uh, a different thing and have not so important uh, respect uh, because uh, uh, we still have from the monarchy the great court museums inherited by the, from the monarchy, the Arts Historical uh, Museum and the Natural Historical Museum. And we have also the Austrian Gallery in the Belvedere and some private art associations like the Secession and the Künstlerhaus. So that's why I started with this picture is the only um, initiative by the government after the Second World War for the fine arts was the Museum of the 20th Century, so-called Museum of the 20th Century, opened in 1962. The building you see on the, you see in the up, the building for this was the Austrian pavilion of the 1958 World Exhibition in Brussels, which was dismantled and rebuilt in Vienna as a museum. Um, its founding director, Werner Hoffmann, built the collection of modernism and contemporaries, but it was uh, thought uh, as a professional from the beginning, but it lasts till now. Um, every professional building in Vienna comes in a few years under heritage. Um, Nothing lasts, uh, there's a, a quite common sentence in Vienna, nothing lasts longer than a provisional. Um, so, and, uh, but there was something changes in the, at the end of the 70s. A contact uh, was made with a great German uh, collector of art, collector couple of art, Irene and Peter Ludwig, who first um, handed over loans to the Museum of the 20th Century uh, which uh, ultimately then resulted in the foundation of the Austrian Ludwig Foundation. The Barock Palais Liechtenstein was rented for its purpose, uh, so since um, 1991, the title of Museum of Modern Art was added with Museum Foundation Ludwig. The policy recognized in this time, so at the beginning of the late 70s, beginning of the 80s, there were still um, some um, yeah, sleeping directors of the big museums from the 50s, and, but the, the art world was changing, the tourism was changing. So um, the policy recognized at the time that this unplanned uh, wild growth of collections and museums needed a solution. Several reform groups uh, began to work on the restructuring of the federal museums. 
the 1980s were intended for this purpose. During this time, the site of the Vienna Trade Fair came into discussion. Um, it was uh, built, it's situated in the center of Vienna. It was built in the beginning of 18th century by Johann Bernhard Fischer von Erlach, uh, one of the famous Baroque architects, directed for the Emperor Charles VI. Um, and this was uh, Fischer von Erlach's idle plan for the Kurt stables opposite of the Hofburg, um, as every main building in Vienna uh, remained unfinished. Um, and uh, this was how it looks like at the end, at the turn of the 19th century to the 20th century, so before the First World War. What is important, and uh, you should keep in mind that um, from the Baroque time is only this uh, part of the building. All the other things were added in the 19th century, especially here in, especially here in the middle, uh, the uh, horse riding school, uh, which was uh, in architectural history terms, uh, not of this part, not one of this part was really um, interesting and worth to keep. So, um, but it was more or less this, the reason for the upcoming discussions. Um, so, but in the, that was the situation um, in the 70s. So the Vienna Fair added some holes here in the middle, and but at the end it was more or less in this condition. So, um, but now it's an interesting question, why did politics discover this urban development in the center of the city? It's because of a rumor. It was announced that the lease contract of the Viennese Fair, decided that himself was owned by the Republic, would be phased out. This rumor was never denied by the Viennese Fair, so at the end, the leasing contract had at least to be replaced by payment of 20 million euro in 1993. So there was still quiet and waiting what the decision of the Republic will be. So, and um, the first idea for a new use um, was a large inner city shopping mall. But soon the idea of a cultural use prevailed. This was perfectly suitable for the parallel discussions on the reorganization of the federal museums. And it starts with a scandal. Two people were called to prepare an architectural competition for a museum's use at the Messeballast on behalf of the Ministry of Building. And it's interesting which, which kind of people were called. Um, the one is here it is, the one on the right side, was in this time the publisher of the most important Austrian yellow press newspaper, the Kronenzeitung. It's uh, uh, in uh, relation to the, to the amount of people in Austria, it's the highest uh, flow of uh, uh, yellow press newspaper in Europe. So there's a sentence that the Kronenzeitung is doing the policy in Austria and the politicians followed her. Um, Hans Dichen, and he was also a private art collector and had also a private art gallery and collected especially Jungstil things. And on the left side, the gallerist, um, John Seiler, and interesting was the different fee they got for this um, concept for an architectural competition. For the publisher was in this time uh, two million euros and for the art dealer and gallerist on the left, uh, 200,000 euros. Um, so, and the minister is in the middle. But um, this minister, because of this, not only this, he had a lot of corruption problems, um, had to resign, and his successor dissolved the treaties. But Hans Dichand, you have to keep in mind uh, till the end of the project, because he will follow us. So another group of experts worked and so-called museum's concept, but didn't find a successful end, but something had to be done. So in 1986, I have here, and that's from the beginning of the 1990s, 
uh, the so-called museums debate, you see that a lot of cultural institutions around the center of Vienna, and uh, there was a real growing boom of, uh, a real boom of new venues, new um, um, square meter for exhibition spaces, etc. Not all of them was realized. So in uh, 86, um, started a two-stage anonymous architectural competition and was launched by another minister without any clear program and concept. It was open for all Austrian architects, accompanied by a selection of international architects. And it's interesting, looking from now back, which were the important international architects in 86. So Günther Benisch from Germany, Oswald Ungers, from Britain, Alec Alain Colcon and John Miller from Italy, Gino Valle and Francesco Venezia, Fumihiko Maki from Japan, Edward Raumnicka from Slovenia, Alvaro Siso from Portugal, Gunnar Matson from Sweden, Aurelio Galfetti from Switzerland, and the young Herzog Dömero, and Rafael Moneo from Spain, and Yoshi Suchomel from Stavo Project from Czech Republic in this time, and Istvan Janaki from Ipater, which was the biggest. Hungarian architect's uh, office. And the international judges for this competition were the Swiss architect Ernst Giesel and Jim Sterling from Great Britain. Um, and the nice uh, story is that instead, instead of a clear program of institutions and functions for the project, the call for tenders was a wish list of cultural institutions which could be selected by the participating architect. So they had the possibility to make a proposal for exhibition center for contemporary, big uh, temporary exhibitions, um, for um, exhibitions for art of the 20th century, art of the 19th century, and uh, they can also choose an antique museum of antiques um, because it's an extension from the art history museum and an anthropological and prehistoric collection of the natural history museum a Wotruba Museum, Fritz Wotruba was one of the famous sculptures of the 20th century in Austria, and first um, in this time in 86, the collection Leopold was announced. But they could add to these functions in their proposal for the project, the Museum of Culture, and a movie museum, and also an architecture museum in this time, and the Topakio Museum, which was already existing on site, and institutes for the city of Vienna and some other things. So nevertheless, 88 projects arrived. Um, oh, here is Leopold. I forgot him to show you. Going back to this. Um, seven architects for, uh, there was some um, nice decisions uh, um, from Jim Sterling in this competition, but that's not so. Uh, important. Seven architects were selected for the second stage, but then the project rests. Uh, minister changed, uh, a new debate on the possible uses continues. There was an agreement, more or less, for the Museum of Modern Art, but all other uses are under discussion, especially the Hofmuseen, the Natural History and, uh, and um, Art History Museum wants to realize expansions areas on the side. So in 1989, a new minister again was coming, Erhard Busek, and uh, he started again the project for the Museums Palast, he becoming uh, the responsible minister for science and culture in this time, in 89. Um, <clears throat> I knew him before, and we randomly met on the street, and Busek asked me, how to proceed with the Messe Palast. And he said, he, I, I have already a draft from a prominent Viennese architect on the desk who had been knocked out at the first competition. Should we do this? And I said, no. Um, the second phase of the competition is still missing. So uh, we started to make a program for the second um, phase of the competition. Um, I called a Viennese uh, art historian, Dieter Bogner, to be accompanied in, the, in, the, in developing the program. And, uh, but the minister gave the direction, um, now look for contemporary culture 
programs on this side, for this side. No extension of the federal museums on this new side. They have such huge buildings, uh, they should solve the problems on their venues. So, first, what, should we, what we should realize is a kind of, is the Museum modern, of Modern Art and a kind of exhibition hall for this in the 80s upcoming big uh, art and art history and history exhibitions. You remember Hans Holland's big, big exhibition on dream and reality and uh, which was also in Paris and in Vienna and others. And then um, um, we thought about a special museum of cultural history of Viennese modernism to include in this museum the Leopold collection and some other things from other museums. So it's time to uh, explain the Leopold collection. Rudolf Leopold is here on the, on the left. Uh, a Viennese eye doctor began to collect art in the 50s, especially Egon Schiele, which were largely unknown at that time in the international art market, also in the local reception in Vienna. He built an art collection of over 5,000 works, and in the 80s, he called for recognition of his art historical performance by the Republic. Leopold demanded the purchase by the government of his collection, um, the construction and uh, uh, developing of a museum for himself and his collection, paid by the Republic, and he as director of Lifetime for this museum. Uh, this deal hovered all over the years on the conce conception of the museum's quarter. His demand was strongly supported by the Kronen Zeitung and his publisher Hans Dichern, who hoped thereby to appreciate his own Art Nouveau collection. So in 1994, the collection was bought by the Republic and the Austrian National Bank by 160 million euros and all claims of Rudolf Leopold become fulfilled. So it's now the Leopold Foundation. And, uh, and he became lifetime director and died some years before. So back to the Messe Palast. In the course of the development of the composition, competition for the second stage of the competition, the term museum's quarter was born, which demanded a substantial change in the urban and architectural conception. It was no longer, longer one great museum's multifunctional museums complex where you can fill in whatever you want, but the urban development of the district became more important. So in the autumn of uh, 189, the tender for the second phase was held. In the preparatory meeting with the seven architects, a conflict with the Austrian Federal Monuments Office occurs, which could not clear decide which parts of the existing buildings on site are to be preserved and which are not. So the director of the monuments office said in this meeting, um, under heritage is all before 1918. So we, we asked him why 1918, what kind of important art historical data is this? And he said, end of monarchy. So all under, um, all should be solved uh, from the monarchy and what's coming later could be destroyed. Um, so in spring uh, 1990, where there submission and decision about um, uh, the second phase of the museum squad. It's uh, also a nice detail. There were seven architects. Uh, for some of them, their names are not important because in this time, in the late 80s or 70s, 80s, it was very common in Austria that students are doing big competitions and got the stamp by a licensed architect. So uh, three of these seven uh, uh, projects, uh, four of these seven projects were not done by the authors on, because of uh, the student project projects. So one of them was Ordner and Ordner, and the others, um, Oswald Ungers, and uh, Hans Holland was in this, uh, in this group of the seven 
architect, uh, but uh, two weeks before the finish, he asked to extend uh, the date, and uh, the other architect didn't agree with this, so he wasn't he couldn't finish his um, his entry in time. So at the end, Orton and Ordner won the competition. In reading the new urban concept uh, in the program, they decided in making a total new pro project in difference to the first one, not big forms anymore, but uh, an ensemble of different buildings for different uses. So you, let's have a look at it. That was Ordner, Ordner's proposal for the first phase of the competition. You see they keep the historic part here. They use the field before for two single buildings and the whole courtyard is covered with one big building. That was uh, the first phase for the f of the competition and then they changed to this um, composition in the second phase. Um, so they have, um, their proposal here was, uh, here the Museum of Modern Art, uh, here the uh, kind of exhibitions hall and event space, and this, and then um, in this phase was the Leopold Museum, this small one here. This was a kind of media tower, and uh, this uh, um, column here was a kind of uh, contemporary art library, open space library, and here's some other facilities. It's not important now which kind of facilities are here in this proposal of the second phase, because from now on, I think every, uh, every three months the project completely changed. So, in case of the discussions about it. Um, so that was just to remind you the first the first uh, situation after the after the competition, but but what's important was for the urban uh, situation where they um, picked up two directions: the one from the imperial museums and this one uh, from this uh, bourgeois quarter behind the museums quarter, quarter, because it was an idea from the city planning also to bring all the tourists which are passing here by and then entering the museum's quarter, um, going uh, up here to this quarter, there's a lot of restaurants and not going back to the inner city of, the, of uh, Vienna. So, and that is why they introduced here these two directions uh, and uh, switched it here in the middle of the museum's quarter to give a kind of understanding of this urban fabric. So that were <laughs> the presentation of the big model at the beginning. That's myself. That's the former mayor of Vienna. That's Manfred Ordner from the architect. Oh. That's uh, the minister Buzek and the chancellor of this time, Franitsky, and again myself I found. So, but. So as you have seen in the project, the, the museum quarter, the buildings should be integrated in the existing urban development matrix. The project by Ordner and Ordner comprises the new Kunsthalle Wien, the Museum of Modern Art, a and the multipurpose hall for, of events. And as a landmark, this 67 meter high reading tower, um, which was planned for the main courtyard. So to the left and right um, were the two adjoining courtyards, the one to the west intended for the Leopold collection, the one to the east for a media center. So in June, uh, some month after the decision, a special museum quarter development and operation company was founded in which the Republic of Austria has a 75% share and the city of Vienna 25%. And managers of this uh, new uh, development company are the art historian Dieter Bogner and the Lawrence real estate manager Günther Bischof. So, and while the Museum's Quarter Company was established, uh, the protests against the project started immediately. 
um, this committee is opposed to any contemporary architectural building planned in the center of Vienna. More or less the same people were against the Haas from Hans Holland and lots of other projects in the center of Vienna. And they called, um, they said, let's keep all the cultural uses, we don't need it. This, the, histor the, the history of the, of, the, of the existing building is so important, let's keep in horses again and make um, again a horse museum out of these former imperial stables. And from now on, the political and public fight around the project starts and will continue from 1990 to 1995, five years of discussion. And Hans Dichand, you remember, which is Kronenzeitung, are the guiding and leading, the, are guiding and leading the campaign against the project. So that's the kind of uh, advertising against it. Uh, so no, none of this uh, montage are uh, in um, respect and the reality. So that's all Kronenzeitung's articles and others. So, so and the, the slogan was very clear, why, why don't reuse the, only the existing buildings, why do you put new buildings in there? Um, and it's enough to have a Leopold Museum there and nothing else, and so that was the um, yeah, that was the common sense of the, of the protest. Um, so, but the aim of uh, the company and Dieter Bogner and, and Buzek was to bring in here uh, more contemporary culture and art in the new museum squadron. But Hans Stichand was only interested in getting his big Leopold Museum and not to be seen contemporary architecture. So in this year, Orten and Orten, years, five years of discussion permanently react on the changes of the program with uncountable new proposals. So it needs a special research to find out in where the buildings and the functions on the site were traveling till, uh, over these years. Um, in 94, um, has become clear that the Leopold collection will take, take up a significant part of the new museum's quarter and got his own building and that the proposal for contemporary initiatives will not be taken anymore into consideration. So Dieter Bogner resigned as a manager for the museum's quarter. So in 95, the projects come to an end. The reading tower was skipped, the media forum also, but um, both got no political support, and uh, at the end also Minister Busek was deposed by the campaign of the Kronenzeitung. So the cultural focus and intentions um, of the Museum Squatter project have shifted anew, and for the first time the future utilities are settled definitely. In accordance with this new program, Orten und Erdner together with the architect and monument protector expert Manfred Wedern, who joined the project in 95, drew up a completely revised project plan that meets the ever more precisely formulated demands of monium, uh, monument protection and the expectations of the Kronenzeitung. And that, let's go through the final project now. Um, here is now the, museums, uh, the Museum of Contemporary Artists coming on the right side now. Uh, Leopold is becoming his own big museum. And in the middle is uh, the restored riding hall. Uh, but, uh, and the contemporary art hall is uh, behind the, the restored riding hall. And in the riding hall is a kind of two event spaces for theater and other events. So that's the final proposal. Here you see the, the aim was that mostly nothing should be seen from outside. And that is the concept of the Museum of Modern Art. Uh, it's a kind of conceptual idea, this black uh, um, stone, more or less, and the white villa for the Leopold collection. 
and here the brick uh, construction for the brick image for the Kunst hall, for the art hall. This is now the yeah, and uh, what was the result also of this discussion that um, the whole buildings were skipped down into the earth, so the entry, um, the entry level of the Museum of Modern Art is in the middle of the building. So what you see up here is in the same dimensions going down um, into the soil. So that's why we have such a dramatic staircase in the inside. And that are these connections with the um, existing riding, the old riding hall in the middle. So, this is now the entry for the event space and also for the uh, art hall on the back side of the historic riding hall. That's the interior of this event space. So also this uh, space was ticked out of the ground. And this is the one of the exhibition spaces of the Kunsthalle. This is, and now a lot of other um, cultural institutions are settled in the old part of the, of the site. So the Architekturzentrum Wien, um, that was uh, um, Emperor Sissi's uh, pony riding hall, and it's now the Library of the Architectural Center. And that's a piece of foreign architecture, uh, the restaurant of the Architectural Center by French architects Lacadon and Vassal. And that's a children's theater, John uh, Wien, and that's the plan of the of the realized uh, situation as it works now. So um, the museum's quarter over the last years, since the opening in 2001, is really becoming a hotspot of the cultural life in Vienna and for tourists also. So the institutions which are finally on site is now the Museum of Modern Art, the Leopold Museum, the Kunsthalle Wien, and a dance quarter a big one, and a, a children's museum, and um, a children's theater, and a kind of children's info point where they get a lot of information about um, the offering for children in Vienna, and the architectural center in Vienna, and this event space, uh, different two halls for different events, and some independent, a lot of independent cultural offices. So what's the conclusion? What you can see and experience at the Vienna Museums Quarter today is the result of a lot of dispersed cultural and political powers without any clear program. You can see the fight for the historic city against any new and contemporary interventions. And you can see the power of mass media and the yellow press and the personal interests of a publisher. At the end of the debate, in the end of the de end of the battle of the, um, the museum quarter was under construction, was to started to be under construction. I met Hans Dichand and asked him, will you stop now your campaign, your campaign against the project? And he answered to me, yes, because all my interests are now fulfilled. They are followed, following my guidelines. Hans Dichand died in 2010. And at the big opening of the museum's quarter in 2001, no one of the, um, of the uh, politicians which were in charge for, from the start of the project, project was in charge anymore. So the chancellor of the government in this time, the minister of culture of this time, the mayor of the city of Vienna gave their speeches. No one, was, uh, no one of them was responsible for the realization of the project at the beginning. In the very last moment, they allowed the architects to be present a few moments at the opening. But the only politician who took the responsibility for the realization, Erhard Busek, was not even invited to the opening. So that's uh, the role of politics, mass media, and what architects can do between all these interests.
Thank you.